Yeah, so we back at it. And today's discussion is going to be on Matthew 21, 43. And I constantly bring up this scripture. This might even be a part five. <laughs> I can't even keep track. I'm always talking about Matthew 21, 43. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, that's going into a nation that will call their sins to remembrance. Now, think about it. In Christianity, one man died for all of mankind's sins. Therefore, their sins are not being brought to remembrance. That is going into a nation, preferably the nation of Islam, who say, you know what? We don't believe Jesus, peace be upon him, dying for our sins. We believe that we need to repent and we need to ask God to forgive us for our sins. Now, let's deal with Gentiles. First of all, we're going to have problems because you don't even understand that the Ishmaelites are Gentiles. Now, believe it or not, I've had people literally tell me, that the Ishmaelites are not Gentiles. Now, a strange people equals a strange nation. Who has the kingdom today? Is it not the house of Saul? Who has the strongest military? What religion is that military? Now, the strongest military is the United States. Now, some people will say Russia, but I don't believe it. I believe they could be number two, but I believe the United States is the most powerful military. And the religion of that military personnel is 69% Christian with the most common denominational with the most common denominational preferences being Catholic, 20% and Baptist, 14%. So there is a mixture and of all faiths, of course, but predominantly the strongest military in the world is Christian. Now that should answer your question. Who has the strongest military is the same one who has the kingdom. And that is the house of Saul. And that is Christianity. So there is a news flash for these Israelite camps. Talking about they going to get the kingdom. Talking about they got the kingdom. No, you don't. The only other nation that it makes sense that the kingdom will go to is the house of David, which I call the nation of Islam. Christianity has the kingdom right now, Israelite camps. They have the kingdom. Paul, the apostate, the self-proclaimed apostle, the wolf in sheep clothing, he has the kingdom. He stole the kingdom. Okay, he thought he was the Shiloh. Okay, and he became the rabbi of the Christian church and he became the God of the Christian church. Ask yourself these questions and you will know this truth. Who is the kingdom that is on top today? Is it not Christianity? So the Christians have the kingdom. The strongest opponent to the house of David or Islam, is Christianity. Christianity is the largest religion in the world, the most powerful. But right now, do you know that Islam is the fastest growing religion? And if you study, do your research, you'll see that Islam will eventually be the most strongest religion on the planet it will be in the coming future if you do the math now that is a picture of the kingdom of God translating 
from the hands of King Saul or Paul into the nation of Islam. 2 Samuel 3 and 1. Now there was long war between the house of Saul, that's Christianity, and the house of David, that's Islam. But David waxed stronger and stronger. And the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. Now if you study your Bible, the truth is in there. Especially in the Hebrew scriptures. When David became king, it didn't happen overnight. Okay? Saul was dominating for a while. And even after Saul's death, Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. And he did that by marrying King Saul's concubine. And that's a whole nother message. Okay, this man had his own king's wife because Abner was a nephew to King Saul. So even after the death of Saul, the house of Saul was still strong. But what happened? It started getting weaker. It started getting weaker. And it started getting more weaker. Especially when Abner switched sides. Now, what's going to happen to Islam when the Christians switch sides? The strongest leaders in Christianity, the leaders in these churches convert to Islam. Islam is going to get stronger. And Islam is going to eventually be the kingdom of God set up on earth. 2 Samuel 3.10 To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan even to Beersheba. Now that scripture is referring to the prophet Samuel. Samuel was fully established to be a prophet. Just like the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Notice it said from Dan to Beersheba because in Christianity, in the Israelite culture, they don't know anything about Dan no more. They say Dan has been absorbed into all the other nations. How a man is going to be absorbed into another nation? Men create nations. So a man cannot be absorbed into another nation. Now the women can. Okay, the women can, but not the boys. What happened to Dan? The church don't know. These Israelite camps don't know. Therefore, we know for a fact that there's things missing in the previous scriptures that has been restored to us in the nation of Islam. And the kingdom is eventually, sooner or later, it's going to go from the house of Saul, and that's Christianity, into the house of David, which is Islam. Now, you don't hear people talking about this. A lot of people are not studied up to even know anything about this. Okay? Now, I give God all the praise, but this is advanced. Okay? Now, I'm not being prideful, but think about Muhammad Ali. He boldly declared that he was the greatest. Now, when you are competing, when you are competing, you have to believe in yourself and you have to have faith within yourself, okay? You have to believe that you are the champion. And I give God all the praise, okay? I boast in the Most High God, but I give God all the praise because when I look across YouTube, when I look over these social networks, when I look out into the world, I don't hear nobody talking about the kingdom of Saul and the kingdom of David in this way. But it is very, very accurate. Especially when you know that David was a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. They both were shepherds. They both had books, okay? They both were warriors, and they both had issues with women, okay? The prophet Muhammad did something lawfully, 
Okay, he had a woman of a young age in which the Bible does not prohibit you marrying a young woman. It doesn't. Okay, he did something lawfully that in this generation people esteem it as evil. Okay, and they call him a pedophile. Peace be upon him. We know that the God of the Bible gave us no clear instructions on marriage. So even though he did something lawful, it is regarded as a reproach. Just like David, he had reproach. And especially after he married Abigail or a baby gal. <laughs> you get it? A baby gal. A baby gal. After David married Abigail, he had issues with some people. I know some people was like, dang, David just took this man's wife. And I know that's a picture of the prophet Muhammad marrying a baby gal, a woman of a younger age, and most People look at that and they say pedophile, which is a white man's word. Okay, there's no age on marriage. And in your own Bible, there's a king that's eight years old and he was married. So I give God all the praise and I say right here in the house of David, we have the truth. We have the truth here in the house of David and we have the truth about Christianity and Christianity is the house of Saul. Okay, the Israelite camps is not going to get the kingdom. The northern kingdom is not going to get the kingdom. The Christians have the kingdom today, but that kingdom is going to be taken away from them. And given to a nation bringing forth the fruit in due time. Okay. I describe it as the rabbit and the turtle. Now the rabbit or rabbi, get it, is Christianity. Christianity was ahead. Christianity used to be the fastest growing religion. But now Islam is the fastest growing religion. Which tells us slow and steady wins the race. Now, getting back to where we was at about Samuel. Samuel was fully established as a prophet. And he gave us the truth. He told us God is not a man. And he gives us the story of the children of Israel putting the sacrifice above obedience. And that's what is going on in the house of Saul. Just like King Saul. He put sacrifice before obedience and Samuel is famous for the saying obedience is better than sacrifice now I have plenty messages on Saul going on now I want to talk about first Samuel 13 13 and Samuel said to Saul thou has done foolishly thou has not kept the commandment that's speaking of the church of the Lord your God which he commanded you God commanded us that the son shall not die for the father. And they do that in Christianity. Okay. The hugest religion in the world. Is based and built upon something that God was against. God is against a son dying for the father. Period. Which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. That's speaking of the Christians. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. Now this is speaking of David. But metaphorically it is speaking of the prophet Mohammed. If you disagree, I can agree to disagree. Okay, I'm not going to fight you on something that is not in the scriptures verbatim. But according to the Quran and according to the Hadiths and according to the scriptures, I see Islam is that religion that God loves. God sought him a man after his own heart and the Lord have commanded him to be captain over his people. He will be the prophet like Moses. And we know from the Christian scholars, they even believe that there's no prophet that can be compared remotely to the prophet Moses. Peace and blessings be upon them both. Then the prophet Muhammad. The prophet Muhammad 
hammered his people into a nation with a law. He did the exact same thing that Moses did. Moses created a religion and the prophet Muhammad did the same thing. Okay, so the Lord commanded the children of Israel to keep his commandments, but they failed. So now God has moved on and he sought him a man after his own heart and the Lord have commanded him to be captain over his people because thou has not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Okay, so we see that the kingdom, just like it didn't continue with the nation of Israel, it's the same thing with Christianity in the future. Christianity is going to eventually Lose the kingdom. And that's the truth. 1 Samuel 15, 28. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and have given it to a neighbor of thine that is going into your fellow countrymen, just like the definition of brethren. Brother don't absolutely mean blood brother. It actually can mean your fellow countrymen. Okay, think about Lot. Abraham called Lot his brother. Okay, so I know some will say Lot's dad and Abraham were brothers, but look at Edom. Edom or Esau is called our brother. Okay, even though the Edomites were Gentiles, that's seen in 1 Ezra 8 69. Your fellow brothers can go into some people that got the same daddy as you. And we know that Ishmael and Isaac have the same daddy, Abraham, which makes him the father of many nations. Why is he called the father of many nations? Because out of Ishmael came the Gentile messenger. Going on. I like the word play in 28. It says, Rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and have given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than you. Okay, now we know that the other nations were more righteous than Israel. That's seen in Ezekiel. God told Ezekiel, go to the children of Israel, but they won't listen. If I send you to the other nations, they would listen. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the other nations were more righteous than the Israelites. That's seen in the story of Judah and Tamar. Okay. Tamar was more righteous than Judah, although she was a Canaanite. Now let's go to 1 Kings 14, 7. Go tell Jeroboam. Now Jeroboam, I believe, was a picture of Paul. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, for as much as I exalted thee from among the people and made thee prince over my people Israel, God allowed King Saul to be king. Remember, our first king was picked by God Almighty. That was King Saul. Now, King Saul was the people's choice. God only allowed King Saul to be king because the people wanted a king. But the second king was God's choice of a king. And that king was David. And that's going into the two religions. This first religion that popped up, God allowed it. Because this is what the people wanted. Okay. But the second religion, the second most powerful religion today, the nation of Islam, is the religion of God's choice. So we have to keep in mind. That God is sovereign. And he allowed us to have the zunk first. He allowed us to have the first thing that popped up first. Just like it wasn't his aim and desire for the children of Israel to have a king because he was their king. That's why Israel is called prince. Okay? Because they were under the king, God Almighty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because the people wanted a king, he gave them King Saul, which was a complete nightmare. And that's exactly what God did 
with Christianity. He gave us Christianity because that was the religion we wanted. The children of Israel always wanted the sons to bear the sins of the fathers. And so God allowed us to have that. But the second religion is the David. It is the religion that God loves. And it is the religion of Islam. Okay, I know you don't like it. It challenges you. Okay, but it is the religion of God's choice. And rent the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it unto you. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart to do that only which was right in mine eyes. So even though the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, came along and he gave us the true religion. God allowed the religion of Christianity to still flourish. Okay, he allowed that lie. Okay, just like the story of Ahab. When God put a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. God gave us Christianity because that's what we wanted. Okay, and the judgment right now, although he's speaking to Jeroboam, is really speaking to the house of Saul. God allowed Christianity to be the most powerful religion, and what have they done with it? Okay, they have already supported Israel in killing the Palestinians, the same people that have the same Messiah, supposedly, as the Christians. The Palestinians have Jesus as their Messiah. Peace be upon them. What has Christianity done? Christianity has turned this world into a complete mess. And the judgment is this. The kingdom will be taken from the house of Saul and it will go to the house of of David. Now, the Christian church has the kingdom today, Israelite brothers. Okay? Y'all fighting for the kingdom and y'all talking about these Edomites when these Edomites and both of y'all, y'all have the kingdom because y'all all are under the house of Saul. Okay? So, when I say the kingdom shall be taken from Israel, I am metaphorically speaking that the kingdom is going to be taken from Christianity and is going to be given to the religion of Islam one day. One day soon that will be the reality. 1 Samuel 4, 11 and 12. And the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinez were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh. The same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. Now this man of Benjamin coming to Shiloh with his clothes rent is a picture of the apostate Paul. Paul thought he was the Shiloh. Why was Paul in Arabia? Why was Paul in Arabia? No one knows, okay? Why did Paul write 13 letters? Paul thought he was the last and final messenger in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. Okay, that's why he always talks about saints, 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 saints. Because the last and final messenger, it's been prophesied that he would show up with 10,000 saints in Paran. And he will come with a new book, a fiery law. That's none other than the prophet Muhammad in 629 CE when he showed up in Mecca. And made them retreat and destroy the idols. Okay. Paul was rushing. Paul was the rabbit. Paul actually thought Jesus was going to come back in his time. Okay. He thought Jesus would return in his lifetime. And he was wrong. Okay. Paul was the wolf in sheep clothing. Paul stole the inheritance. And what's going to happen is. The first thing. Jesus will do when he descends amongst us as a just ruler is he will destroy the cross, okay? And that is going into Christianity. 
There is no Christianity without the cross. Okay. And going on. Eli, Hophni, Infinez. That is a picture of the kingdom being taken from Israel. And given to a foolish nation. Which is the nation of Christianity. Okay. And eventually is going to leave Christianity. Because the saints of the Most High, which is the Muslims, is going to take the kingdom back one day. All right. Daniel 7.13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. But the saints, in verse 18, of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and never. Now, God gave a Gentile king this dream. He didn't give Daniel the dream. He allowed Daniel to interpret it. But the dream was given to a Gentile heathen king. Now, how could the father divorce Israel and then allow his son to marry Israel? Now, these Israelites is lost. These Israelite camps say that God divorced Israel, but Jesus married Israel. <laughs> this stuff right here is baloney. Now, let's look at the scriptures. The Bible is against a father going into the son's wife. God is never, ever going to authorize either a son marrying a father's wife or a father marrying a son's wife. Judah went into his son's wives. Two of his sons had this woman. Her name was Tamar. Genesis 38 and 2. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite. Whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. And Judah acknowledged them and said, She have been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Sheila, my son. And he knew her again no more. Now that is verse 26. So Judah went into his own son's wife. Okay. And then after he realized that she belonged to his two sons, he didn't touch her no more. No more. That was an abomination. In Amos 2 and 7 it reads that pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor and turn aside the way of the meek and a man and his father will go in unto the same maid to profane my holy name. So why would God give Israel to Jesus? No, he married Israel. He can't allow his son to marry Israel. Okay. Now the Bible knowledge of these Israelite camps is very, very poor. I want to keep going and proving my point. The Bible is against a son going into the father's maid. This is going to be Genesis 35 and 22. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. Now let's go to Genesis 49 and 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Picture of Christianity. This is a picture of Christianity. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defiles thou it he went up to my couch okay you took your father's kingdom okay why you think Jesus said this is my father's house this is my father's house the church didn't belong to Jesus okay in Islam that belongs to the father it belongs to the father now, when you study, you'll see that the greatest offense when a son marries his father's wife, that is going into a man taking 
God's religion. That's what that's going into. The story of Abner taking his uncle's wife, that was a picture of a man-made religion. These are the things that angered the prophet Esau. He called it the traditions of men. And he gave us the strongest clue. He called it the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, but they had sick and twisted beliefs on the resurrection. So, metaphorically, when a son is marrying his father's wife, that is a picture of a man stealing God's church. Now, I unashamedly, boldly confess that Paul is the one who did this. Christianity is the religion of Paul in which I call the house of Saul. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 31, 32. I'm going to show you how God was the father or the husband, rather, of Israel. Jeremiah 31 and 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. Now let's go to Jeremiah 3 and 1. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's wife, Shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? That thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again unto me, saith the Lord. So in our Bible, we have scripture and scripture and scripture that tells us that the son is not supposed to have his father's wife. He ain't even supposed to see her nakedness. So just think how foolish the Israelites sound when they say, oh, God divorced Israel, but Jesus married Israel. So God divorced a woman and he allowed his son to marry it? That don't even sit right. It don't. So wrapping this whole thing up with this Matthew 21, 43 thing, I got more knowledge and more insight in it. Because I've been studying it. I've been seeing that the kingdom will be leaving Israel. And the kingdom has left Israel. And guess where did it go? It went to the house of Saul. Okay. The first king of Israel. And that is the Christian church. And I'm telling you right now. That the kingdom is going to in the future. Is going to leave the house of Saul, which is Christianity, and it's going to go to David. It's going to go to David. It's going to go to the religion of Islam. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. I encourage you to study. Okay, don't get on here and start saying stuff you can't show scripture for. A lot of these guys, they want to go to scriptures and say, oh, um, this and this. And then you go to the scripture, they don't say anything about what they were saying. Okay. All the Christian has is assumption. All the Christian has is interpretation. They can't give you a scripture where it tells you to worship Jesus. They can't give you a scripture where it says worship Mary. They can't give you a scripture. Where it says Jesus is God. Verbatim. No, they assume that. Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters. In the real truth.